Hey everyone, we're going to see how to load a JSON file in a Go application. Um, so where this might be beneficial is if you're creating a Go application and you need to load some kind of configuration file, well JSON is a very nice format to work with. Another popular format is XML or YAML, um, but my personal preference is JSON. So what we, what we want to do here is we want to create a JSON configuration file and load it so that way it can be used within our application and that, that file might contain database information or just anything in general. Um, and it really isn't that hard to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project in our Go path. So I am currently in my Go path. I'm gonna make a new directory. I'm gonna call it my project. I'm gonna navigate into it and I'm gonna create two files. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create a main.go file which is gonna have all of our code and then I'm going to have a config.json file, which is going to have all of our configuration in it. So what we want to do is we want to open these two files. I'm going to open them in my editor of choice, which is Atom. You can use whatever editor you prefer. And we're going to start inside of our main.go. So we're going to say package main and uh, function main. All right. So let's first start by creating this config.json file so we know what we're going to try to load here. So typically what you would have is maybe you would have database and then that might be an object and that might include a host. Um, so we'll just say lo local host. We're just going to use fake information. Port. Maybe this is MySQL so it's 3306. Doesn't really matter. Um, let's close all of these errors out that are popping up in my editor. Um, and then let's say maybe we have um, a, I don't know, maybe we have an actual application uh, host name or a port. Let's say host, and this one will also be on localhost, and then port, this might be 8080. Um, so I'm just making stuff up here. Uh, maybe we have database information, maybe we have application information, doesn't really matter. Uh, but let's go ahead and save that. So now let's go into our main.go file. And what we want to do is we want to create a structure um, that will hold this information after we load it. Um, so what we can do is we can say type config and we can name that whatever we want. And inside of this struct, what we can do is we can say database. And this is going to be a struct in itself. And we're going to say host. That's going to be of type string. In our JSON file, we're going to say that it is called host. Um, it's also going to have a port, which is going to be a string, and we're going to say also JSON, and we're just really matching what we have in that in that file. So this, the actual database structure is going to be, um, it's going to be have JSON, and it's going to be called database, um, and and you can see where we're going with this. It it really looks just like what we have in our in our config file. So we have database as our parent kind of object here. We have a host and a port which is what we have. So we have parent object, host and a port. Uh, we're also going to do host. That's going to be a string. That's going to be JSON. It's also going to be called host and port. So we're, we're just matching what we have in that config file. And we can save it. So this is where things might get a little interesting. Um, so let's go ahead and create a, a function for this first. Uh, let's go ahead and say uh, function and this will be load configuration and we're going to pass it a file name and this will be a string and it's going to return a config so inside of this we can say var config and that's going to be of type config then what we want to do is we want to load that file so we can say config file otherwise there's going to be an error and that equals os.open. I'm going to pass in file name. And my editor will actually add the imports for me automatically. If yours does not, um, then just go ahead and add them uh, as we go along. So what we want to do is we want to see if, if it erred for any reason. So if it erred for any reason, um, and we could actually, instead of just returning config, we could return two, two items here. Um, and this one could be um, an error. We can say if error not equal to nil, so if an error exists, we can say return, and we can say config, 
which should be uh, nil, or we return the error. All right, now if that succeeds, then we can move along. Um, but actually, before we do that, um, we want to actually say defer, and we can say config file dot close. So what we're saying is that when this when this load configuration function is done, when when it's reached the final line, it's going to close for us. So it's going to defer till the end and and then close, um, because it's good practice to close the file after you've loaded it. So after we've confirmed that there's no errors, uh, what we can do is we can do the following. We can say JSON parser. This is just a variable name equals JSON dot new decoder. We're going to pass it a config file. So right there um, because we've opened it uh, we want to decode whatever was loaded um, into a JSON kind of parsed object there then we can say JSON parser dot decode and config so uh, we're, we're taking that that data that was read from the file the lines that were at, it's only really one um, but we're taking that data the config file data and we're decoding it. So we're decoding it into our config struct. Um, so because we've modeled it the same, uh, it'll all get loaded equally. Um, if we had extra properties in either, um, they would be blank or not loaded at all, which is fine. Uh, what we can also do is we can say error, um, and we're not going to do the, uh, the colon here because it's already been loaded once before. But if there was an error, we can say if we don't even actually need to do that. We can actually just say return config error uh, because error will be null um, if there if there is not an error. So let's go ahead and try to make use of this now. So inside of the main, what we can do is we can say maybe fmt dot print line starting the application. So that way we can say that it's working so far, um, and then we can jump into saying, uh, well, we want to store a config, so we can say uh, config and we can even say I, I don't care about the error but we can say equals load configuration um, the configuration file is sitting side by side with our main.go file so we can say config.json and then maybe we want to print it out so we can say fmt dot print line config now let's see where that brings us so what I want to do is I want to go back to my terminal and I don't have to build it um, I can if I want but I want to say go run and then start at go file so I want to run all of my go files so I'm going to enter and it went ahead and it printed out what was inside of my configuration file so it printed out this structure um, so if we wanted to I can say uh, this uh, dot database dot host I, I have access to each one of those properties so I'll run it again uh, this time it just printed localhost. So just to reiterate here, um, so that way you know what's going on, uh, we created our, our config.json file. It could be however complex we want to make it. And then inside of our main.go file, we created a struct that matches that. Um, so that way we know exactly what we're trying to load. Then we created a load configuration function. It accepted a file, um, and that includes the full path. Um, and then it returns the actual config or an error. Um, so what happens was we open that file, we load it into a config file variable, uh, we close it at the end. If, it, if there's an error, we'll return, um, and then error won't be nil, but config will be. Uh, if not, we try to decode that data that was read, uh, and we decode it into uh, a config variable, which has the type of uh, struct, and then we return it and we we make use of that in our main function so it really isn't that hard but it is it's very useful when making go go application 